Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. You know, I love giving post-fight interviews, especially when I make a good call. Well, you know, there's a flip side to that. Videos like this, where I blow a call, where I get it completely wrong. And, of course, I'm here with egg on my face, eating crow, talking about Albert Mensa's victory yesterday over my pick, Michael Cassidis. Now, if you missed the pre-fight video, I pointed out that Mensa had fought 11 guys who were making their pro debut. Not only that, he had multiple losses. And he didn't have that great a knockout ratio. I questioned whether he could control pace, control distance. Quite frankly, I thought he would cave when he faced Michael Cassidis. I was not expecting Mensa to go the distance. Well, Mensa not only went the distance, Mensa won the fight. Let's talk about what surprised me. I think it's important to uh, always review your notes and uh, always look at the things that surprised you after a fight. The first thing that really surprised me was the fact that Mensa was so calm under pressure frequently in this fight. And um, Cassidus out threw him, right? Cassidus was the busier fighter. Frequently in this fight, Mensa found himself in a corner or up against the ropes. I was expecting him to fold. I was expecting him to look like Kevin Mitchell looked against Michael Cassidus. You know, I thought if Cassidus got him up on the ropes, especially since Cassidus is a little bit shorter than Mensa, hits harder, could get under Mensa's guard. I thought the fight would be over. I was expecting a stoppage. Instead, Mensa leaned back on the ropes and literally timed some great counter hooks. And uh, they were well-timed and they were accurate. Several times in this fight, Cassidus' head literally snapped back. He was hit flush with a punch while he was recklessly trying to come inside on Albert Mensa. Cassidus certainly tried to bully Mensa. He just could not deal with the accurate counterpunching. And it was interesting, too, because the counterpunching, you know, they weren't jabs. Mensa was throwing counter hooks. And so uh, that really surprised me more than anything else in the fight. Let me also say, too, that looking at their records, I thought that Mensa might have a stamina problem. We got to the seventh round of this fight, and Mensa looked like he was out of gas against the fighter, Cassidus, who, of course, had gone 12 rounds many times, including his last fight against Ricky Burns, right? Well, incredibly enough, Mensa was able to catch a second wind. And I thought Mensa actually not only got that second wind, but even took the ninth round on my scorecard, uh, throwing pretty good counters. You know, he recovered and he continued to throw pretty accurate counter hooks. What also surprised me in the fight was just how much Michael Cassidis' defense has deteriorated. You know, he used to have a defense kind of like young Mike Tyson, where he'd roll with punches, right? He, he had a bounce to him. He would literally roll with punches. Punch would come, he would roll, and he would come back with something else, right? Unfortunately, now, his defense looks like that of older Mike Tyson, where the bounce isn't quite there. The reflexes aren't really quite there. When the punch is coming, rather than quickly move, roll with the punch. Now Cassidus is getting hit flush, right? That's a sign of a fighter on the downside of his career, right? I had thought going in 
that Casitas had lost to elite level fighters, Robert Guerrero, Juan Manuel Marquez, Ricky Burns, and that against a up and comer like Mensa, he would have the defense to at least negate what Mensa was doing, especially since Mensa didn't have a big knockout ratio. Instead, Casitas looked even worse than he did for most of the three fights against the elites defensively. In fact, he looked like he did for the last three rounds of the one Manuel Marquez fight. In other words, he had better defense early in that Marquez fight than he did in this fight, right? And I thought that was pretty surprising. Uh, Casitas really looked predictable. He really looked like he didn't even know how to throw feints to force Mensa, who was waiting in the wings to counterpunch, to literally counter punches that weren't there, right? You know, if you're fighting a counterpuncher, you want to counter the counterpuncher at times, right? If you know the guy's waiting for you to dive in before he throws a punch, you want to fake like you're diving in. He throws the punch. He's wide open. You can counter him. I didn't even see that level of coordination from Michael Cassidis. I was a little disappointed in his execution. I liked his aggression. I liked the fact that he out threw Mensa. I didn't like his defense. I didn't like the fact that he didn't think more and do certain things. The other thing that surprised me too was uh, the fact that Cassidis, who has boxed a little bit in the past, right? He actually at times has had fights where he hangs outside a little bit. I was a little bit surprised by the recklessness in which he went after Mensa. You know, um, you would have thought that he would have taken a step back, been on his back foot a bit. Mensa couldn't hit him regularly with the jab, right? Mensa seemed to be really living off of hooks. And given that Cassidus was shorter, and given that Cassidus could fight out of a crouch, that should have made it hard for Mensa to hit his body. So I thought, you know, Cassidus would shrewdly alternate his attack, various attacks. Some rounds come in, be aggressive. Other rounds fight off his back foot against a lesser experienced fighter, right? Guard against the hooks and then jump in with body shots. I just didn't see that. So um, I was wrong about Mensa. I was very impressed with his calmness off the ropes. I was very impressed with his accuracy. I was very impressed with his performance. And of course, I was a little bit disappointed in Michael Cassidis, especially at the end of the fight, when Cassidis looked spent and quite frankly was getting hit flush with too many punches. You know, if you know a guy is going to throw a counter hook, if you know that, then how are you still getting hit with that punch in the ninth and 10th rounds repeatedly? Let me just say too, just another criticism. This is what I do. You know, Cassidus is lucky Mensa doesn't hit harder. Because were he to get hit flush that many times by someone like a Brandon Rios, he wouldn't have seen it to the end of the fight, right? He wouldn't have been upright. Fortunately, Menzo, although it looked great on TV, I'll be the first to say it, it doesn't look to me like Mensa hits as hard as some of the other guys who Cassidus has fought. Right. Joel Casamayor actually put Casitas down a couple of times in uh, their fight. Right. And I'm not sure if Casamayor hit Casitas flush as many times as Albert Mensa hit Casitas. Right. As for Mensa, let me just say this. The punching power is an issue now that he's fighting contender level fighters. Right. He really does need to 
outscore his opponent because his KO percentage is less than 50%, right? His volume is also an issue. Take a look at the CompuBox numbers for this fight, right? Casitas threw many more punches than he did. Now, as you watch the telecast, right, Joe Tessitore and Teddy Atlas, at the end of the fight, they both thought that Mensa won the fight, but they were both concerned as to whether or not the judges were going to be smart enough to judge the cleaner punching, right? We've seen fights, Eris Landy Lara against Paul Williams, where one guy had the cleaner punches, the other guy had the volume. Right? The judges went with the volume guy. If I'm Mensa, I have to find a way to either get greater leverage on my punches. In other words, if I'm landing as flush as Mensa landed yesterday, I need to get the stoppage or at least the knockdown so that it's clear I'm winning the fight. I need to either do that or I need to find a way to pace myself better so that I throw a higher volume of punches. Maybe what he wants to think about doing, quite frankly, is to dominate for three rounds and then to take one round off, right? You know, fighters use tricks to make sure that they have gas left in the tank late and to make sure that they throw enough volume in rounds in which they're countering well to actually have it be recognized by the judges. Anyway, those are my thoughts uh, after a tough fight for me. Let me know what you think. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And I congratulate. There were a few people who wrote on the comment section of my pre-fight video that they thought this was a close fight and that Mensa had an opportunity. I applaud that crowd. I was on the wrong side of the aisle on this one. Thanks for watching.